Hello there, my name's Mark, welcome to the video. Today I'm on my favourite little day ticket water, not uh, far from where I live. I came on here a few days ago and fished the whip and I uh, was catching plenty of roach, but I noticed that I was catching a few skimmers. So today what I'm going to try to do is just target the skimmers and see how I get on. Not sure whether it's going to work, let's give it a try. What I'm going to do is use ground bait and I'm going to combine these two. I've got a mainline uh, cereal based ground bait and also census 3000 so I'm going to mix those about 50 50 and the hook bait is going to be pinkies and they're the dead pinkies I'm going to put a few of those in the ground bait so this is my uh, old faithful fishing box a Shakespeare box I do like it because it's quite lightweight I've got a big heavy seat box but I don't know as I've got older I don't want to lug that around so much so uh, this is quite handy I put all my gear in it and uh, it's quick to set up and that's what I'll be sitting on today and the peg there we've got around about four feet of water it does deepen up to around about seven or eight foot further out so today i'm going to be waggler fishing and this is the float that i'm going to be using it's a really sensitive antenna float it does take quite a lot of weight which makes casting easier and also the amount of shot down the line is going to keep the rig quite steady the heavier weight will help keep the rig stable and skimmers do like the bait to be quite static so uh, that's the theory, <laughs> we'll see how we get on. Added a bit more water because it had dried out a little bit by the time I got set up and plumbed my depth and whatnot. And I've just added a few pinkies, just scattered them, not gone too heavy on it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a ball in that size to start off with. fishing about two inches over depth to start with and uh, these floats are extremely sensitive so often you've just got to tweak the shot in sometimes you put a bit too much shot on and the uh, antenna gets submerged it's just a case of fine-tuning it really to get it where you want it I'm gonna put a ball of ground bait in just that one sort of walnut sized ball of ground bait and uh, yeah, the plan today is going to be a little bit different. If you saw my whip fishing video on this same venue, the idea was to uh, continuously feed maggots with a view to attracting the roach. But I also put a bit of ground bait in and my theory is that that's attracted the skimmers on this water. My plan is just to feed ground bait and no loose feed. I think that all the roach just get a bit chaotic in your peg when you're loose feeding on here. There's so many roach, they're darting about, they get very chaotic. And I think that might put the skimmers off, which is a more sort of sedentary species, just sort of pottering about on the bottom, aren't they, usually? So I'm not going to loose feed, I'm just purely going to gra put ground bait in. I put one ball in now, and I'm just kind of finessing my float, it's still stuck up a bit too much for my liking. But uh, yeah, that's the plan for today. See if I can catch a few skimmers. So I've just dotted that float tip down with a number 10. Blimey, a number 10 shot. I could hardly see the darn thing. Uh, thankfully, I've got some little, uh, really tiny pliers that I put them on with, but my fingers don't seem to like number 10 shot anymore. Or 11, 12, or 13 shot. Well, yeah, they just don't come into my fishing anymore, those. So I've got a pinky on the hook, just a single pinky to start off with, I think. I was going to stick a double on, but let's just take it slowly. So casting out, let's first cast with some bait on, so let's see what happens. Although I am hoping to sort of concentrate on trying to catch skimmers, anything could happen here. There's uh, obviously a lot of roach in here and perch as well, so to be honest, it's a cold day and I'll be quite happy just to get a few bites. Well, we've had a couple of frosts. Oh, there's the first fish. Very delicate bite from a tiny little roach. <laughs> I was catching on the whip last time, but it's all right, they'll all do. Leave me squashed pinky on. <laughs> Very delicate bite, that. 
So we have had a couple of uh, really harsh frosts. I uh, was on the Ribble a couple of days ago with the lads and uh, it was a tough day because the night before was minus three, minus four and when we got there the, the dace and the roach weren't having it. They came on a little bit later on and we, we managed to all catch but uh, it was pretty hard going early on and at half past five in the morning, really cold. <laughs> There's another little tiny, tiny, tiny fish. Blimey, that must be the smallest roach in here. <laughs> A bite's a bite, so I'm just going to put a new pinky on. I'll tell you what, let's put two on this time, let's live dangerously. So yeah, it's weird how frosts affect things. I think that uh, they do get used to it. Once it gets a consistent temperature, even if it's a low temperature, the fish will have it, but when you get a sudden drop, like I think it went from about plus six degrees to an overnight temperature of around about minus three, minus four, it just kills the sport the day after. tiny little lift pipe. We've got these teeny teeny little roach that really the peg started like that last time. We were just catching these tiny little roach. So another one in the net. It's been pretty hard work actually. I've had sort of about 15 small roach on pinkies. Fed a couple of bowls of ground bait in the last probably about an hour and a half and uh, I decided to change things up a little bit. I've decided to slop up some ground bait now, put a few more pinkies in and put a, a real sloppy ball in to create a cloud and see if I can attract some skimmers into my peg. So as yet, that sloppy ground bait hasn't attracted any skimmers, but it's attracted a, perhaps a better stamped roach. So that's encouraging. That's another bite. Oh, that's maybe a better fish, maybe a better roach. So there are hundreds, well, nay, thousands of roach in this particular water. So it's not surprising that we're going to get a few bites from them, possibly before the skimmers turn up, if they ever do. <laughs> but I'm not going to go mad and bowl lots and lots of bait in. But what I will do is just assess things, and uh, I might try another bowl of ground bait. That's another roach. <laughs> I did get some enormous gudgeon last time I came here, so uh, we all love gudgeon, don't we? I don't mind if I catch one of those today. So last time I came, I had, I think it was about seven skimmers and, and lost a couple as well. So this time round, I'm, I was hoping they might be knocking around the same peg here, but we have had some different weather conditions. We've had another little roach. <laughs> um, we've had different weather conditions. We've had a lot of frost couple of nights and we've had a lot of rain last night and water levels are higher and obviously this cold water come in so I'm not sure whether this plan's gonna work slightly bigger roach Whoop. I did squeeze three tiny pinkies on that hook then another roach what's that roach number 19 not any gudgeon yet, I haven't had any perch yet, um, nor have I had any other target species, which are skimmers. The plan's not looking very good. <laughs> A little bit of sunshine coming out now. It's still absolutely bitterly cold, it's got colder as the day's gone on. Just feel a little bit warm, perhaps psychologically looking at that sunny far bank over there. But it is still cold on this side of the lake. Something a little bit bigger on. Might be a netter jab. It feels like a perch. Oh, it's jagging around. Oh, it's a little roach. Widely a netter. But probably the biggest one for today. <laughs> yeah, definitely not a netter, really. <laughs> but a lovely, lovely fish, nonetheless. Beautiful. Well, we've got something 
bigger on. I think it could be a skimmer. Could be what we're looking for. Let's see if we can get it in. No, it's a roach. It's a bigger roach. Oh yeah, lovely fish. Not a skimmer, but Ooh, beautiful roach. There we go. Nice. So what I've noticed after feeding that sloppy ground bait sort of two or three times is that eventually the bite seemed to slow down so I'm thinking I've probably overfed the peg. So for the last hour I haven't fed anything, I've just left it to settle. And I've had the odd roach here and there but still nothing else, no perch, no gudgeon and certainly no skimmers yet. pretty soon I think it's, it starts going darker around about four o'clock and it's uh, after three now but overall it's been a slow day it's always good to get out on the bank but it's it's been a bit of a tester today and although I'm sure that I'd have caught more roach by loose feeding I did want to see you know just what would happen if I just fed ground bait so always worth doing I'm getting a lot of bubbles over to me right. They look big bubbles. They look like maybe a carp's churning the bottom up there to me. So you never know, there might be a bit of carp action. <laughs> Certainly too big for skimmer bubbles. But yeah, definitely it's, it's a moving patch of bubbles. You can see that on the camera. But that looks to me like a carp or a carp in the bottom up and on a 2.8 pound hook link and a very fine wire hook I don't fancy hooking one of those today <laughs> skimmer would be very welcome but yeah not one of those carp so that's the end of the session I'll show you the final net in a moment and uh, give you a few conclusions for today but uh, I want to say thanks very much for watching hope you're enjoying your own fishing and I hope to see you on the next one thank you so that's the final net for today we've got 30 roach in there one or two nice ones didn't get any skimmers which was my target species for today but on a bitterly bitterly cold day I'm really grateful for getting any fish today to be quite honest so yeah gotta be happy with that haven't we Thanks very much for watching, all the best. <laughs>